Hi, everybody. As you can see from the timer, we'll start in about 20 seconds. Just doing a few last minute checks to make sure my computer is working properly. Make sure the microphone is working properly. We'll start the English lesson in about six seconds, five seconds. Well, hello and welcome to this live English lesson. I'm Bob the Canadian and I will uh, be your host today for this hour of answering questions about the English language. It was super fun to see all of the familiar faces in the chat. I know I can't actually see your faces but I can see your names and it's good to see people joining a minute or two before or five or ten minutes before the lesson just to say hi to each other to say hi to me. It gives me a chance to say hi to you as well. Um so, it's kind of fun for me. It's good to see Eugene from Etobicoke is here. Uh internet shop. Sita is here. Madi is here. Mode Eggs is here but I think Mode Eggs might be leaving in a bit. Semra is here. Rod, the Brazilian English teacher of course. Uh Madi, I think I mentioned already. Mohammed, Anu Watt, Lolly Lolly, Maria C. Um, Julia Olise. I think I said Sita. I should make a list of people to say hi to so I don't say things twice but welcome. Thanks as well uh, to Todd and Dave who are here to moderate the chat. By the way, uh, Todd and Dave have been moderating the chat. I think Todd for it's getting close to two years for Todd and it's probably about a year and a half or more for Dave. So, I very much appreciate their commitment and the time that they give to do this. It's very very helpful. If you are new here, and you're wondering what is happening. I'm Bob the Canadian. I teach English here on YouTube. I just got it and on Saturdays uh, at 11 a.m. my time, I do a live question and answer lesson. Todd and Dave in the chat will occasionally share a link that you can use to ask a question. I will take those questions and try to answer as many of them as I can over the next hour. So, if you do have a question, please submit it. Uh please use the chat for English conversations. Over the last couple of years, the amount of English conversation in the chat has really improved. It's really cool to go back and watch the video again and for me to see all the cool English conversation that's happening in the chat. Uh, I see Brent from American English with this guy has popped in. Good to see you, Brent, as well. Um remember, it's not just me who's an English teacher here on YouTube. There are many of us. So, you should probably watch more than just my videos because there's a lot of good variety out there and a lot of good lessons. Um let me jump though to the first question. Um let me see here. Um let me see if I have the right question on the screen. <laughs> so, this is from Eduardo and Eduardo says, hi, Bob. Good morning. Please, could you could you give me some phrases that you use when someone falls in love? Thanks in advance. Well, Eduardo, I did a lesson on how to express worry in English and I did another lesson uh, on how to express other emotions. I might do a whole lesson on how to express love although I might be blushing the whole time I do it. Um in most cultures and languages, talking about love can cause people to be slightly embarrassed but what would I say? I'll here's a simple response. In English, if you say I love you to someone, it's a pretty serious thing to say. Um if you do actually love someone, it's a nice thing to say but I do find people who are new to speaking English sometimes say I love you when it might not be appropriate, okay? We usually use the word like a lot to talk about people. So, you can say things like this. If you were talking about a band that you like, you could say, oh, I love them. That's totally appropriate but at work, if you say to a colleague, I love you, that's not appropriate. Instead, you would say, I like you or I like working with you uh, or I love working with you. That would be fine as well. So, anyways, enough time on the question of love. I should spend an entire lesson talking about how to appropriately express like and love in English. Uh Vito says, hi, Bob. Can you give me some examples of connected speech that you use every day? Thanks. So, this always reminds me of a time when I was teaching someone how to speak English 
and they wanted to know what the phrase what you're gonna do means. Actually, they thought it was one word what you're gonna do because they had heard it in the theme song for the television show Cops and it goes bad boys, bad boys, what you're gonna do. So, what are you going to do becomes what you're gonna do, okay? We very much compress and connect and contract our speech. So, um and then the second one would be one of my first videos was on the phrase how is it going? And we actually say how is it going? How's it going? So, if I met Brent, Brent and I hope to meet up after COVID somewhere nice, maybe Niagara Falls so I don't have to drive very far. I would say Brent, how's it going? I wouldn't say Brent, how is it going? That sounds very strange to my ear. I would say how's it going? So, two quick examples of connected speech. Uh let's see. <laughs> Miss uh M Bilal says, sir, how would you describe the feeling in your body? Gonna add a little word there after a f- your first tough exercise which doesn't let you move easily. So, a few I I can help you with this because I started lifting more weights this week. Um you would say this. Oh, um I'm really stiff. That's probably the best expression. You could say, oh, my 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 body's really stiff. Like your muscles are a bit sore um but definitely stiff would be the word that you use. Um sometimes after I exercise really hard um I am stiff the next day or I'm sore. You could use both of those phrases. Let's see here. Next question is from Ruslan. Hi, Ruslan. Hello, the best teacher Bob. Thanks, Ruslan. How are you, sir? Which expression is more grammatically correct? The house of yours or your house? So, they are both somewhat correct. The first one sounds very formal. Like you could say to someone, um that house of yours is very old. It yeah, the house of yeah, it sounds very old fashioned, okay? I would more say your house. Your house is very old. Um how old is your house? My house is very old. Uh next question from Mahmood. Let me get a little sip of water here. Hello, teacher Bob. How are you doing? Could you please tell me what's the difference between essentially, apparently, and presumably? When you use them to start a sentence, they mean very much the same thing. They're just kind of a way to start a sentence where you're going to state a fact. So, essentially, um this video is about answering questions about English. Apparently, this video is about answering questions about English and presumably. So, essentially means it is actually about that. Apparently, is something you would say if you just discovered that. If you watch this lesson for a bit, you might say, oh, apparently, this is a lesson where Bob answers questions about the English language. And presumably would be you would say that in advance to someone. You would say, um I haven't watched Bob's videos but presumably, they're about uh in those videos, he teaches English. So, some example sentences, maybe not the best explanation there. Sorry, let me just check my audio again. I'm a little distracted because I'm getting weird errors on my computer again but it doesn't seem to be affecting the stream. So, that's good. Hey, I did wanna uh answer a question or statement that I saw in the chat earlier. Before I started the stream, someone mentioned that because there's no subtitles, they have trouble understanding this live stream and my response and Mode Eggs mentioned it as well. It's always a good idea to watch parts of this live stream again later because if you wait a couple of days, YouTube usually adds automatic English subtitles and because I try to speak clearly and at a a normal pace, a, a slightly slower pace, the subtitles are usually really accurate. So, if there's a part of this lesson that you don't understand, do come back in a couple days and watch it again. It can be quite helpful. Um let's see here. Athanasios over there in Greece says, hello, dear teacher. How are you? I'm good. We could say, hey, guys, do you mind speaking more softly? Thank you. Um you could say that. Um so, guys can be used to refer to guys and girls but we're using it less like that, okay? When I talk to my class, I have boys and girls in my class. I don't usually say, hey, guys, quiet down or hey, guys, do you mind speaking a little more quietly? You would probably use quietly in your sentence, by the way. Um hey, guys, do you mind speaking a little more quietly? If there was a group of guys in a restaurant, 
being really loud, that's what I would say to them. Hey guys, do you mind speaking a little more quietly? And then if it was guys and girls, I might just say, hey, do you mind speaking a little more quietly? I wouldn't even include guys or girls in there. Let's see here. Shanae says, hello, teacher Bob. Could you explain the difference between to encourage and to promote? Much appreciated. When you encourage someone, you want them to do something. So, you try to explain why it's a good thing, okay? So, if I want to encourage someone, I would say, um you should take an English test. I think you would do really well. I think your English is awesome. So, you say positive things about someone to kind of encourage them. I know I'm using the word to define it to do something. So, when you encourage someone, you're kind of trying like let's say someone is running every day for exercise. You might say to them, you should enter a race. So, if you say that, you're encouraging them. When you promote something, it's a little bit different. Um let's say Jen is selling flowers today which she is. In order to sell the flowers, she promotes them on social media. So, she tells people about those flowers. So, it's slightly different. Now, you can also get a promotion at work. Like my boss can promote me. That means if I'm a teacher, I could get promoted to being a supervising teacher. So, it does have multiple meanings. Let's see here. Cigar says, hi, teacher Bob. How to use the word metaphor in conversation? What does it mean? Like he spoke metaphorically. Okay. So, there are two ways to create word pictures. You can do it with a simile or you can do it with a metaphor. A simile uses like or as, right? So, you would say the clouds in the sky were like angels. So, you're comparing the clouds to angels using like. When you use a metaphor, you actually just say the thing is the other thing to create a link to it. So, you could say um the leaves on the trees are the spring clothing um of the season, okay? So, I'm not using like or as. So, it's not a simile. It's a metaphor. Anytime you use a metaphor, it's when you you kind of paint a picture with words of something as you compare it to something else. Hopefully, that made sense. Next question is from Diego. Hi, Bob. Morning. How's it how's it going today? That's what I would say. In the Monday, oh, on Monday, little correction, I'll have a job interview for PayPal. Could you please give me a few advices for it or give me some advice for it? Thanks for your lessons. Well, I did a lesson on um job interview, English for job interviews. Maybe Todd or Dave could look that up and link it in the chat. I think that might be a good video to watch and if you do search Bob the Canadian job or Bob the Canadian jobs, there's at least two videos in my library that might you might help you with that, Diego. Um but First of all, I wish you all the best. I'm I'm that's awesome. I hope it goes really well and I think you got this. That's what we would say to encourage you. You got this, Diego. You can do it. I hope you get the job. Uh let's see here. Zulma says, hi, teacher Bob. What's the name of the table that is not in the dining room? In Spanish, we say anticomodor. Thanks in advance. Have a great month. God bless you. Well, let me look up a picture of that for a sec. Um let me look up a picture of that and I'll tell you what we would call it. Yeah, you know, we have a few different kinds of tables. So, we have a kitchen table. If you have a separate room for eating, you might have a dining room table. You might have a dining room. This is kind of an older thing. Most people don't have dining rooms anymore that I know of but we have a kitchen table If I had another room for eating called the dining room, I would have a dining room table and yeah, the only other night table I can think of is like a night table or um something like that. So, I'm not sure. Good question. I like it when I'm stumped. Oh, I can't answer this one, Iad. When should I use up, down, into, on, at, and in? Yeah, there You could do a series of like 10 or 20 lessons on prepositions and still not cover it all. Um I'm gonna ask Dave or Todd once again to find there's a video in my library about in, on, at, and by. Uh the thumbnail is me up in a tree. 
Um, if Dave or Todd could find that, that might be helpful EAD as a place to start. But it's that's a pretty big topic and hard to explain quickly. I will say this. Um when it comes to traveling, um you travel by plane. You usually get on the plane but you can also say when you're sitting in the plane. So, that's why it gets really confusing. When you travel by car, you get in the car. So, you can see already that I'm using different prepositions depending on the nuance of the sentence. So, tricky. I would search for as many videos as you can on YouTube from myself and other teachers to help you understand that. Uh Roosevelt says, what's your tip for us to talk English more quickly? I'm gonna change that last word. Um anything you do in life, if you want to become faster at it, you just have to do it more. And the story I like to tell is this. When I was young, I worked for my uncle as a construction worker. We uh, as a carpenter. And so, when I first learned to bang nails in with a hammer, I would tap the nail once and then hit it nine or ten times. After a whole summer of hitting nails in with a hammer, I could tap the nail once and then I could hit it two or three times to put the nail in. The same thing happens with uh and the English language. The more you speak, the better you will get at it and the faster you will be able to go. Um that's really that's really the it's that simple. Spend as much time as you can speaking and eventually your speaking speed will increase. I don't have any tricks for doing it faster except um tongue twisters, reading out loud, Anything you can do to challenge yourself to use all of your muscles in your mouth will help as well. Let's see here. Laura. Bonjour from Brittany, France, Bob. Merci pour cette leçon live. Okay, sorry. I'm trying to translate my head. Bonjour from Brittany, France, Bob. Thank you for this lesson. My question is, what's the difference between the sky and the skies? Thanks a lot. I would say this. In everyday speech, we say the sky. There's an airplane up in the sky. Um the sky is blue. I really like the sky. Sounds like the phone's ringing but I'm not going to answer it. Jen will answer it. I'm sure she will. Um when we talk about the skies, it's more poetic, you know, uh or you're talking about multiple skies. So, I could say this. The skies at night in the summer are very beautiful here, okay? So, I'm talking about not just the sky but multiple skies that happened on different days. So, you can use it in the plural. Sorry, it's probably a bit annoying when the phone rings, isn't it? Um I'm sure Jen answered it. I'm sure someone is coming to buy flowers today. Uh we'll see. Hopefully, that's what it is. I like it when Jen sells flowers. Um let's see here. Next question from Kismo. Hi, teacher Bob. How are you? I'd like to know what your city's nickname is. Thanks and have a good weekend. So, um the closest city to me is Hamilton, Ontario. I also live relatively close to St. Catharines, Ontario. The nickname for the city of Hamilton is the hammer. So, some people call it the hammer. I don't call it the hammer but Hamilton starts with H-A-M. Some people call it the hammer. St. Catharines, the other city that's close to me, some people call it St. Kitts. They just shorten the name. In English, we always like to shorten things and sometimes give things nicknames. So, um yeah, the Hammer and St. Kitts, definitely. I'm glad I could remember those because I don't use those nicknames but those are definitely the nicknames. Judith is here. Hi, Judith. Good to see you. If someone moves to Vancouver, can he enroll in the British Columbia University to become a doctor of medicine? I don't know. So, it's tricky when you move from another country. If you've already studied at a university, your courses and credits don't always transfer. So, let's say you did four years of university in your country and you moved to British Columbia to go to med school. That's what we call school for doctors and um you might not have all the courses you need to go to med school in Canada. You might have to take more undergrad courses, regular university courses in order to qualify. It's kind of unfortunate but sometimes people move to Canada with a certain level of education from their own country but our universities make them repeat courses. Um so, it would really depend on what 
education the person has from their own country and the university itself would decide. And then the the last thing is I'm not sure if the University of British Columbia offers whether they have med school. They probably do. I'm sure you check that. Um but that would be the other thing. Good question though. Um <laughs> this is this is gonna be a little embarrassing to explain. Irina says, hi, Bob. Please explain this line from a song. While misery beds honest men. Bed as a verb. Thanks in advance. So, in English, when you say you're going to go to bed, it means you're going to go to sleep. But if two people say um they're going to go to bed together, it usually means they're going to have sex, okay? So, to bed in the sense of what you're seeing here, this is a poetic line saying that misery and men are in bed together, okay? So, the emotion of sadness is romantically intertwined with men. So, it's definitely from a song that's talking about um the other meaning of the verb to bed, okay? Or to go to bed. So, hopefully, that made some sense. Gets a little tricky to explain some of the verbs we have in English when they have sexual overtones for sure. Next question is from Divyata. I am already fluent but how to be more fluent? Well, here's the thing. When you are already fluent or very fluent in a language, you need to keep challenging yourself. One way to keep challenging yourself is to make sure you aren't talking to the same people all the time. To make sure that you aren't watching the same videos all the time from the same person. To make sure you are reading outside of your comfort zone. So, not to talk about my own videos again but I have in the past talked about how you sometimes need to get out of your comfort zone. So, let's say you're fluent and you meet with an English tutor once a week to practice English. You should probably find a different tutor or another tutor so you're getting some variety. Let's say you're fluent and you only watch videos from me on YouTube. You should probably find other people to watch on YouTube. Um and then let's say you're fluent and you really like reading science fiction books. You should start reading books in other genres. You need to kind of push yourself in different directions for sure. Um and then spend a lot of time in groups with native speakers because conversations between a group of four people where one person is learning English and three people uh, are fluent speakers. They don't have to be native speakers but fluent speakers. Um that's different than a one-on-one conversation uh with a tutor on Skype or Facebook. So, push yourself. That's what I would say. Um and don't stop practicing your English. Otherwise, it kind of fades a little bit. Um Yaroslav. Hi, dear teacher Bob. How do you motivate your students? A few tips. Thanks. You are an awesome teacher. So, in real life in my classrooms, how do I motivate my students? Well, there's a couple of things I think that I do especially in my upper level classes. I try to make sure students realize I'm there to help them. I'm not there to give them bad grades and get angry if they don't do their work. I'm there to help them learn the thing that I am teaching. It's a little easier for me to motivate students because I teach upper level French and upper level computer studies and students generally choose to take my classes. They're not forced to. Um but usually, I just try to make sure I understand how much the student already knows and then help them get to the next level. I think it's critical for a teacher to know how much a student knows so they can help them make progress and if you can help someone make progress, that's very, very motivating. Um let's see here. I see Dave saying, hi, Alexander. Please keep political issues out of the chat. Yeah, we try to keep I never do um lessons on politics uh or religion or anything like that because it it usually starts arguments. So, we're just gonna leave the chat calm and enjoyable as much as we possibly can. I think that's best. Um I did do a lesson on elections once though. That was a good lesson. I liked that le- lesson. It wasn't super popular but I liked teaching it. So, that that, that was good enough for me. Uh let me see here. Mohamed says, hello, dear teacher Bob. Have you ever seen rocket lift offs from SpaceX? I'm gonna add a, an S there. I'm an aeronautical engineering student and I wondered it. Yes, I have watched rockets take off from SpaceX. 
I have watched rockets fail to land on YouTube at SpaceX. I have watched a lot of videos of rockets launching uh, from SpaceX. I find it very, very entertaining. Um let me just check something folks. I got a bit of a yeah, I think everything's working. I'm just getting a little bit of frame drops. I'm not sure why but looks like everything's working. Uh let's see here. Maria C. Hi, Bob. How are you? How can I say that I don't have a fixed time to work because I work with my phone and my computer and I don't work in an office. Thanks a lot. So, there's a few different things I could tell you. One is if you work for yourself, we would just say that you're self-employed or you're a freelancer uh or you make your own hours, okay? So, there's a few ways to describe working for yourself. Um if you work for yourself like you're your own boss, you could say to someone um oh, I don't keep regular office hours. I'm self-employed. I, I'm self-employed. Uh I'm my own boss um and I yeah. It's interesting. If you do work for someone, you would simply say that you work from home, okay? But I think the best way to say would be I don't keep regular office hours. I make my own hours, okay? Or I set my own schedule. That would be another way to say it, I think. Uh Mode says, could you please say the following words? Out, about, doubt, drought, couch, mouse. Thank you. I just wanted to hear the cute Canadian accent and make you and others smiles. Smile, sorry, silly me. So, I can say those again. A lot of times people ask, what's the difference between an American accent and a Canadian accent or American English and Canadian English? So, first of all, they are very, very similar but what Mode is showing us here and asking me to do is pronounce words where Canadians have a unique slight difference in pronunciation from Americans. So, later I will go outside, okay? I'm going to go out. Um I'm not gonna tell you what the movie that I watched last night was about. Um different than boat by the way. Sometimes Americans think we say a boat but we don't. It's about Um sometimes when I'm making a video, I doubt myself. I think maybe it won't be a good video. Um when it doesn't rain for a long time, we have a drought. Um sometimes I have a nap on the couch and I really don't like it if I hear a mouse in the house at night. There you go, mouse in the house at night. <laughs> Thanks, Moat. That made me smile for sure. Um next question is from Ray Liana. Hi, Bobby Bob. I wanna ask some other ways to say how are you in a conversational, informal and casual way. Thanks a lot and keep safe. So, here's the thing. I I don't wanna sound negative but there are other English teachers on YouTube that sometimes say, don't say how are you, say say this instead or stop saying um hi, how are you or stop saying how's it going. Um and they make you think that English speakers don't actually say those phrases but we do. The number what here is what I say when I go to work. I walk in the building and my boss says, hi, Bob and I say, hi and he says, how are you? And I say, I'm fine. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. How are you? That little interchange is probably 80 or 90 percent of what English speakers do say when they greet each other. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Um or fine and you. Like it literally is what we say. Here's what I plan to do. Over the next, well, when life goes back to normal, I'm actually gonna track every day how people greet me. I'm gonna write it down every day and then I'm gonna make some charts for all of you that shows you what the most common greetings are in my part of Canada. It could be different in other parts of the world. I know in Australia, they say things like, um yeah, we say how are you doing? They say how are you going? We don't say how are you going in Canadian English. Anyways, um hi, how are you? Very common, Raylena. Raylena. Um so Ahad says, kindly do a video someday using vocabulary that might be handy when dealing with lawsuits, courts or legal systems in a country in its political background. Thanks. I'll I'll try to do that. Um Sometimes I do lessons and it's outside of my area of knowledge or expertise. I don't know a lot 
I had about the law. I did do a lesson on crime in the law I think but that was the extent of what I knew but a lesson specifically on lawsuits and courts. Maybe I could do that because yeah let me put something together for a few weeks from now. I'll add it to my list for sure. Uh let's see here. Um Murad says, what is the meaning of life for you? So, I'm tempted to say 42 and that's a very geeky joke by the way. If any of you any of you have read The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adam Adams, um in that novel, they discover that the earth is a giant computer built to calculate the meaning of life. And I'm pretty sure it generates the number 42 as the meaning of life. What is the meaning of life for me, Murad? I would say this. My primary goal in life is to try to help others more than I think about myself. I'm not very good at it. It's not the first thing I think about every day but I do really try to help other people as much as I can. If you knew me in real life, you would be like, ah, that's BS. BS means bullshit, by the way. It's a bad word. Don't say it. Um, because I think I'm just a normal human being and it can, it sounds really good, right? Oh, my, um, the meaning of life is to help other people. Um, but I do. I do very much when I go for a walk, I try to think about how can I make the world better? What can I do? And one of the things I do is teach English on YouTube. Um and again, I'm not perfect. Um I have moments where I'm a jerk. I have moments where I'm not a nice person. I have moments when I'm angry uh, and all those things but I usually come back to this thought that you know, I'm uh getting older and I don't wanna live the last 20 or 30 years of my life um selfishly. So, I try my best to help where I can. Next question. Let's see here. Um let me change something for a minute. It is the half hour mark. So, as we normally do each week, I'm first of all gonna thank the 434 people who are watching. Thank you for being here. Uh but I am going to flip the chat to members only mode for about 10 minutes. So, if you are not a member, please be patient. I'll start answering questions again in about 10 minutes but I do want to um do something each week to thank my members. People who have clicked the join button get their name in green. They get a crown. They get an extra video on Wednesdays um but they also get to ask questions directly in the chat um which uh which I really enjoy. I get to know some of you a little bit better. Um let's see here. Maria C is just having a conversation. Very cool. Mohammed says, do we have a plan of the week for the live lessons and other videos? Yes. So, Mohammed, I do a live lesson every Friday now at 8 30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and that lesson always has a topic. Um I just finished a topic. Um I just did air yesterday. In fact, I think I still have the slide here. Um so, yesterday I did a lesson on air where we looked at things like the atmosphere, the word nitrogen, fresh air, air pollution, etc. And I think next week, I will probably do the fourth. I did water, air, and fire. I need to do earth yet. So, there will probably be a lesson this Friday on earth. And then I also do this question and answer session uh, on Saturdays, okay? Let's see here. Sita says, oh, Bob, what a great answer you gave to Murad's question. Yeah, but I do wanna say again, Sita, It makes me sound better than I am. I am just a human and I have failings. I try to be nice all the time. Sometimes I'm not. So, don't think I'm saying, oh, I'm the nicest person in the world because that's not true but I do try. I do try really hard to be nice. Maria, hi, Bob. How are you doing today? I want to ask you if there are provinces in Canada because we have provinces in Argentina too. And who is your current president? Thanks and have a nice Saturday. So, Maria, yes, we do have provinces. I live in the province of Ontario. There are provinces from the west to the east coast. So, British Columbia, Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, Ontario, Quebec, Newfoundland, Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, and Prince Edward Island. And then we also have the Yukon and Northwest Territories. Um but we don't have a president. We have a prime minister and his name is Justin Trudeau. 
Eugene says, hi, Bob, please say happy Mother's Day to your mother and your wife. Do more housework for them. Thank you. I will do all of that, Eugene. By the way, tomorrow is Mother's Day here in Ontario, Canada and in many other places in the world. Uh either today or tomorrow I think is Mother's Day. Uh and by the way, um what was I gonna say? Oh, I'm not doing a geo guesser live stream tomorrow night because it's Mother's Day. Jen and I are going. We can't go anywhere but we will probably go for a drive and maybe go to the lake or something but everything's closed in Ontario but we'll still try to do something. So, no live stream tomorrow night on my other channel. Julia Olis. Hi, dear teacher. I watch a lot of TV shows and I have noticed the word savage become viral and people often say that was savage or that is a savage burn. Is in your area words like this? Yeah. So, savage has become like an extreme word, right? Like if you if something is extremely mean, you say it's savage like a savage comment. That word kind of floated up and disappeared a bit I think last fall but honestly, my knowledge of current English isn't as good as it normally is because we are not at school a lot right now. I teach remotely. So, I don't hear students talking. Um Lolly says, Bonjour, Bob. Is there a difference between stale air and polluted air? Yes. So, polluted air is when factories and cars put pollutants in the air. Stale air is just if your apartment is closed for weeks on end and you've never opened the window, then the air gets kind of stale. Kind of smells funny. Um Sita, that's also my goal in life but you're right. It's not that easy. That's true, Sita. It's not easy. Anyway, hi, teacher Bob. When will you do a live stream outside again? I love to hear the sound of crickets in your garden. So, I'm waiting for shade. Right now, there is a little bit of shade outside. We think that next week, I might start doing them outside again if the weather's nice. So, hold uh just hold on because it might be two weeks. Um my daughter who actually makes sure the cats don't bother me asked me today when we were going to start doing them outside again. So, probably next week and you want. Um Oscar's actually sitting under the shady tree right now. By the way, shout out to Oscar. This is going to sound kind of funny but Oscar has his own Instagram account now. My one of my kids thought it would be fun to practice their photography skills and they thought they would put photographs of Oscar on Instagram. So, if you are interested, um Oscar the Canadian on Instagram. Uh that's that's Oscar's Instagram account. We're hoping that he gets sponsored by a dog food company at some point. <laughs> we'll see. Um let's see. Let me get back. Mouse in the house says Semra. Yes. Uh Sita says, we are like that. I feel you. Don't worry. I completely understand what you said. Awesome. Um Samuel Chen. Hi, Samuel. Hi, teacher Bob. Recently, I watched a video by a linguist. He said it's better to relax yourself when learning a foreign language even though it's not easy. Thanks for your live. I think so. I think there's a number of things that really stop people from making progress a little more quickly and one is fear of talking or getting nervous. Now, it's hard to stop being nervous. If someone says stop being nervous, that doesn't make it easy to stop being nervous but certainly um relaxing is very very helpful. That's why I really like telling people to listen to a lot of music, a lot of English music because the music itself can be relaxing and then you can learn some English as well. Um let's see here. Um thanks for your live. Samra, how are you? Amina, good to see Samra talking. Maria C, you're one of the nicest people on YouTube, Bob. Thanks for the answer. I try. I I'm not sure I'm the nicest but I try as much as I can. Um it I think it's easier to be kind when you're old. If you met me when I was 20 or even 30, um I think I've become less selfish as I get older and I think life experiences can do that to people. Um let's see. Rod. Hi, Rod. Good to see you. I totally agree. We have to be more proactive and less reactive. Also, empathetic and resilient. Mr. Bob, stay safe. It's Mother's Day here as well. I agree, Rod. Empathetic means to you know try to think what it's like to be another person before you say things about them. So, hard to do sometimes but a good thing to do. 
Julia Oliz, thank you, dear teacher. It's pouring rain here since morning and internet connection just killing me but I'm still here. Good to hear that, Julia. We have a really sunny day right now but it is going to rain. Actually, two of my kids are mowing lawn right now, I think because we wanna get the lawn mowed before the rain comes. Uh, let's see here. Lolly says, merci, Bob. Samra says, so emotional, Bob. You help humans already. I, I try. Maria, I'm following Oscar on Instagram. Thanks, Maria. Mohammed says, yeah, I saw it on Instagram. Yes, I shared it yesterday. Um, I need to follow Oscar's Insta. I, I add Oscar the Canadian cute dog. Yeah, he is cute. Um, and uh, my kid who's doing it um, comes up with funny things to say. Sometimes I write the quote but um, I think it's a lot of fun. It's a cool way for someone to practice taking photos to to create an Instagram account even just for fun. So, I, it's kind of cool to see my uh, one of my kids learn to use a camera really well. Um let's see here. I don't have Instagram but I feel I should make it. I added says Semra. Awesome. I'll follow Oscar. I love animals and Oscar is a great boy. Thanks, Sita. And Lolly, I saw Oscar on Instagram. Can I say I love Oscar? Yes. So, yeah, it is tricky, right? You can totally say I love Oscar um for sure. It, I should make a good lesson on like and love. I think I did one but I should do another one, I think. Uh let's see here. Um let me turn off members only chat. Give me one second here. Um live chat. Turn that off and we'll go back to a normal chat. Anyways, thank you to all of you who are members. Thanks for helping support me. Um it's uh, uh it's a lot of fun to do these live streams and what makes it more fun is seeing not just members but regulars and seeing people have conversations. I feel like that's a really cool thing that happens when these live streams are happening. So, thank you. Let me get back to this question though which has just sat here <laughs> for 10 minutes and I haven't answered it. R to me says, hi, teacher Bob. You are the best teacher. I like your channel. Your lessons and other videos are great. So, not another but other. Your lessons and other videos. Can you please explain the word nevertheless? So, nevertheless is a weird uh phrase because you say things like um let me see. I'm gonna look for an example. I can't think of one off the top of my head. Let me go here. He was very tired. Nevertheless, he went on walking. Okay? So, it's when you there's a certain fact that means here's another good example. Um it's starting to rain but nevertheless, I'm going to keep mowing the lawn. So, it's when you an action happens or something happens where you think maybe you should stop doing something but you carry on doing it in spite of that. That's not a great explanation but I I think it's good good enough for now. Okay, next question. Let me just check something here. Sometimes I like to try and figure out. Here we go. So, Lu Wenji, I think that's how I would pronounce it, says, uh, oh, it looks like it got highlighted in the background as well. There we go. Hello, dear teacher Bob. I'm a Chinese man and of and I very much love your English class. Okay, you do have to add that in there. My question is, does English, do English people learn grammar? A little fix there. Best wishes to you. Yes. So, my own children who are native English speaker do learn grammar. They learn what adjectives are, what adverbs are, what verbs are, what nouns are. They learn grammar a little differently than people who are learning English for the first time but they learn all the parts of speech. They learn how to connect sentences. They learn how to write creatively. So, definitely English speakers from probably age nine to age 17 actually when they take writing classes, they will study English grammar and how to create good sentences. Let's see. Let's see. Ario says, hola, Mr. Bob. How are you? Good, Ario. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you. My question, can you do a lesson on Detective Conan English? I'm sure we can learn English in that Japanese animation. I will make a note of that, Ario, because I'm not familiar with that show but sounds cool. I maybe should watch a little bit of it. Let's see here. Natalia says, hi, dear teacher Bob. How are you? I'm good. 
My question is, how frequently do you see, little fix there, how frequently do you see in your school students from other countries? We call them exchange programs. Um so and we call them international students. Best wishes. Um quite often, we have many students from China in our school. Um we have some sco- students, I think one or two students from Korea. We used to have more students from Europe but overall, the whole uh, international student program at our school and other schools is it's kind of, well, it's COVID, right? So, it's not it's not as many students as it normally would be. So, I have though in the past had students from Switzerland, from Italy, from France, from China, from Korea, from Japan, uh from Chile, from South Africa, many, many places. We've had students from almost probably 10 or 15 different countries. We've never had an American student though. I don't know why. Maybe maybe Brent's kids will <laughs> come to my school. Uh let's see here. Healy from Japan says, hi, Mr. Bob. I sometimes talk during online lessons. A little fix there and I only say it's good, it's cool, it's interesting. How could I say those expressions in other words? Thanks a lot. So, you can just start with I. Like, you could say, oh, I like this. Oh, I think this is really cool. Um do you think this is cool? So, you can expand on your feelings by expressing them in longer sentences asking other people but if you say something is good or cool or awesome or incredible or interesting or you could say, oh, I was blown away by how good the lesson was. So, there are a lot of variations definitely on how to express that you like something. Uh Geraldo says, hi, Bob. What is the difference between oldest and olden? Thanks. So, I have five children. My son is the oldest, okay? In my family, my brother is the oldest. Um and my other brother is the youngest. Um in my family, actually my son is the oldest and my one daughter is the youngest. Um olden though is used to talk about the olden days. So, when you talk about the past but like really far in the past, you call it the olden days, okay? So, when my mom talks about when she was a kid, we refer to that as the olden days. Oh, in the olden days um before they had cars. That's just a joke. Um so, olden is used almost all the time with days like the olden days. At least when I use olden. Um Daniel. Hi, Bob. I feel like I am stuck at the same level of English. Any advice? So, yes and I think I mentioned this earlier and I do have a video on um what to do if your English has plateaued and the biggest thing you can do is you need to change things up. Studying longer isn't always the right answer but studying differently can be the right answer. So, um here's a few quick tips um that I'll give you. One is um if you're reading something and it's really easy to read, try to find something that's more difficult to read. If you really like watching science fiction movies, start watching um romantic comedies. Push yourself into areas that you don't normally um spend time in. If you only listen to rock and roll in English, start to listen to hip hop and popular music. Like, try to expand the sources of English in your life to other areas and here's the biggest one. Let's say you love watching my videos and that's how you learn English. Um you don't have to stop watching them but find a completely different uh English teacher on YouTube so you're hearing a different voice um and yeah, you have to kind of This is kind of sad but if you talk to the same person every week to practice your English, after a year or two, you might wanna find someone else to talk to or another person because the thing is when you meet with the same English tutor, maybe you use Preply. There's a link to Preply below or iCambly or one of the other ones. You sometimes just get to know that person and it's fun talking to them and you don't want to talk to someone else but you do need variety. Uh, and definitely look for um chances to be in groups. That's a that's a real challenge for me if I'm speaking French. If I'm having a conversation with two other French speakers um like native speakers, I don't talk a lot. I listen. So, uh try to find those kind of conversations. Uh let's see here. Laura. 
Hello, Bob. What's the difference between trouble, issue, and problem? Could you give some examples, please? Thank you very much. So, I could use these interchangeably. I could say, ah, I'm having trouble with my van right now. It's not running right. Or there's an issue with my van right now. It's not running right. I'm having a problem with my van right now. It's not running right. So, they are interchangeable in some ways but there are slight differences. Kids can get into trouble. That means they're doing bad things. Um when you have an issue with someone or something, it's usually a bad thing. Whereas a problem can be well, that's usually a bad thing too, I think. Yeah. So, anyways, in my examples, I use them interchangeably but they are yeah, there are small differences between them that I'm having trouble thinking about right now. Let's see here. Yasin says, hi, Bob. What does whomstiv mean? I've seen it on a YouTube poll. I don't know what whomstiv means. <laughs> I don't know. Sorry. Maybe I should copy and paste that into you into um whomstiv. Who must of Who must of Who must of I think what you're looking for. Let me put it in here. I could say it was my brother who must have eaten the cookie. So, I'll put that in the chat. That'll pop up in a sec or maybe it popped up earlier. Um I think that's what they're trying to say. Who must have. Okay. So, it's incredibly contracted condensed um reduction of speech. A lot of connected sounds. Um that's the guy who must have stolen my car. That's how you would say it. I think that's what it means. We'll go with that. Uh Jake says, hi, handsome Bob. What is your favorite food? What is your favorite movie? Which country do you want to go to? Well, Jake, here's the thing. I'm actually not gonna answer that uh because in the next couple of days, I have to record the answers to all those questions for my friend Rod, the Brazilian English teacher. Uh a couple weeks ago, actually a little more, Rod sent me questions because together, Rod and I were putting a video together. And uh, some of those questions are actually in those will be in that video. Rod will put that out in his channel in a few weeks. I do apologize, Rod. As Rod knows already, I've been really busy for the last three weeks. So, I have not gotten to it yet. So, Jake, I'm gonna hold off uh and then when Rod gets the answers from me for some of those questions and when Rod done is done his video, I'll share it on uh my community page. But uh I think Rod's still here. Yeah, Rod's still here. Yeah, sorry about that, Rod. It's been um what's the best phrase here? Life's been nuts. That's probably the best way to describe it. Uh teaching from home. I was self quarantining for a couple weeks. Um yeah, it's life's kind of strange for all of us right now, isn't it? Let's see here. Uh Mohammed, hi dear Bob. How can I use ain't in sentences? Thanks in advance. So, he isn't coming anymore. He ain't coming anymore. It's a replacement for isn't which is a contraction of is not. So, he is not let's see. The goat is not eating its food. The goat ain't eating its food. I don't use the contraction ain't very often, okay? Um but you can say things like I ain't gonna do that. That would be yeah, I might say that sometimes. Yeah, I ain't gonna eat that. So, I am not going to eat it as well. Do You see that? So, it has more than one contraction like I am not going to run five kilometers. I ain't gonna run five kilometers. Okay. So, the goat is not. The goat ain't. I am not. I yeah. So, I think you get it. Um interesting, isn't it? I I think I do say it that way. Like um I ain't gonna have enough time to go to the store today. I am not going to have enough time to go to the store today. Um Felipe. Let's see here. Hi, teacher Bob. Can you explain the expression? There's more to the world than meets the eye. Thanks. That means that what you see isn't always everything, okay? So, let's say you see a picture of a city and it's a beautiful picture of the city but there's more to that than meets the eye. So, you're seeing this beautiful picture of the city but there might be an area where there's lots of pollution. There might be an area where all of the buildings are run down but they just in the picture show you the beautiful. So, there's more to the world than meets the eye. Here's a great example. 
people on YouTube or Instagram like me, you see a very positive version of our lives, right? We share the happy moments of our lives. And so, there's more but there's more than meets the eye, okay? What that means is that there's days where I'm really sad. There's days where I'm not a happy person but I don't make videos when I'm grouchy. <laughs> I don't make videos when I'm sad. So, there's more than meets the eye. Hopefully, that makes some sense. It simply means that what you see isn't the whole story. That's another way we would say it in English. Let's see Eugene from Etobicoke. Hi, Eugene. Hi, Bob. Can you please make a lesson for Canadian daily use over-the-counter medication? There's a letter C missing. Medication. Um how to read the name and direction like aspirin. I, I will totally do that at some point, Eugene. My biggest annoyance right now is when I buy medicine, I have to use my reading glasses in order to read the side of the bottle. And I always feel like the older someone gets, the more medicine they take, but the smaller the instructions get. Um the print is very very tiny. Let's see here. Um Andre Padron. Hi, Mr. Bob. Hello, Mr. Bob. Handwriting or typing? Which one is better to memorize spelling? Thank you. Have a good day. So, I don't handwrite very often but I still think it's a powerful way to memorize something. Um so, here's what I would say. Let's say I learned a new French word like la maison and I wanna make sure I remember that it's la not le. I would probably do this. I would probably use that word in an email. I would probably write that word down by hand five times and I would probably try to use the word in a conversation that week. I find that when I by the way, I learned la maison when I was a kid. It's not a new word for me. <laughs> um I find that when you learn a new word, if you can type it, write it by hand and use it um once or twice within a few days of learning it, that really really helps me uh memorize it. I think that's a good tactic, a good strategy. Um by the way, hi to the 476 people watching. It's good to see you. As I said, I hope to start doing these lessons outside again. Usually, it's sometime around uh the beginning of May, end of May where I start to go outside. It's beautiful outside right now but there's not a lot of shade yet. So, hold um I keep saying hold tight um but let's see. Maybe next week if the weather's nice, I will go outside. Let's see here. Dr. Tuki. Hi, Bob. Do you have any industrial areas in Canada like the Rust Belt in the USA? Thanks. Boku. Um so, do we have so, here's the thing. Um industrial areas in Canada are outside of our large cities. And we don't actually have a lot of large cities compared to the rest of the world. In fact, most provinces have between two and five large cities. The province of Ontario has Toronto, Ottawa, Hamilton, St. Catharines, London, Windsor and then maybe I've forgotten one or two. There aren't a lot of big cities but each city that we have has an industrial area where they manufacture things and where there's a bit of pollution. So, yeah, I'm trying to think. St. Catharines, Hamilton, London, Toronto. Now, Toronto's made up of a lot of different sections like Burlington is not part of Toronto. I don't think Burlington, Mississauga, Etobicoke, Richmond Hill but I just use I just say Toronto because it seems like one city to me. I don't know maybe Todd and Dave have a better sense but um some provinces only have two big city like Alberta has Edmonton and Calgary. It has other smaller cities but we do not have a lot of big cities. Not like some other countries in the world. Let's see. This is from Semra. Hello, Bob. Nice to see you. I have no question. I'm just listening to you for speaking English. By the way, your sweatshirt is looking good. Yeah, um I don't know. I found this in my drawer. I think I bought it five or six years ago or or even longer and I just thought I would wear it today. It's very comfortable. Um but it's yeah, it's not my normal attire. If you're wondering if people use the word attire. This is not my normal attire but it's a Saturday. I'm trying to relax a little bit and I thought putting on 
a nice comfy shirt. I'm not sure what the design is but I feel like it kind of reminds me of a Chinese artist. Maybe a Chinese artist did this. It's very cool. Let's do one more question folks and then wrap this up. Um Christian. Hi Bob. What is the word you use when you restudy or read something you have already studied in the past in order to memorize it better? Thank you very much. You would say that you're going to review something. You know, oh, I'm gonna review my notes from last week. Um you could say relearn or restudy but we would probably say I'm going to study it again or I'm going to look over my notes. Um I'm going to review my notes. I'm going to spend some time refreshing my memory. We say that sometimes. Uh, I think that's all of them. Let me think about that for a sec though. So like you learned the word or phrase a long time ago or let's say you learned um how to talk about Mother's Day in English a long time ago and you wanna watch. I think Brent has a video today on Mother's Day. You should go watch it. American English with this guy. Um on moms and Mother's Day. Um it would be it would be a good refresher. Okay. It would be good for you to review some of those words and phrases. So, a refresher is good I think for sure. I would say that as well. Um hey folks, I'm gonna wrap this up. Just give me a sec here. Um don't forget that I did a lesson yesterday on air. You can watch that lesson right now if you want but it will be released in uh about 24 hours maybe less and it that version will have automatic English subtitles on it. By the way, I do release um that lesson on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube but please remember that uh YouTube's the only place where they share revenue with creators. So, I do prefer if you can choose watch it on YouTube. That's nicer for me. Um because I do like doing this but I do like getting a little bit of money from the ads too. That's kind of (laughs) helpful. Anyways, um thanks for watching. Thanks to Todd and Dave for being here and moderating the chat again and thanks to all of the people who are here today. 469 people. That's a good number for a Saturday morning. Um I'm sure I'll I've noticed that when I do the live lesson outside, more people come. So, I will see uh, what things look like next week. Maybe I'll set up a canopy so I have good shade and I'll do it where you can see the river in the background. That would be a lot of fun. Anyways, thanks for being here. Thanks to Rod, the Brazilian English teacher for hanging out in the chat. Thanks to Brent from American English with this guy for hanging out in the chat. Thanks to all of you who are members who have clicked that join button. You are awesome. Uh, and before I leave, I just wanted to say one more thing. There's no geo guesser tomorrow night. No live stream tomorrow night on my other channel um because it's Mother's Day. I'm gonna stand outside of my mom's house. She'll stand on the porch and I will stand in her driveway two meters apart. Um no hugs. Can't give my mom a hug for Mother's Day. That's okay. I'll hug her next year. Um and then also Jen and I because Jen is a mom as well. We'll be going out tomorrow to celebrate Mother's Day. Um not sure what we'll do though. (laughs) I'm in the same boat as all of you. You really can't do anything right now. So, we might just go for a drive um and look at the countryside. Anyways, bye. I'm Bob the Canadian. Thanks for learning some English with me. I'll see you Tuesday with a new lesson and I'll see you next Friday with another live lesson. Bye.